Hello my soccer universe, the Champions League group stage is in the books and these guys are back where they belong, every Rossonero fan will agree. Now I had a little blip, I actually recorded a short video this morning but for some reason it didn't post and I don't know exactly know why but you know, uh, in a one minute video you get uh, my thoughts uh, now in a, a slightly longer version on the events uh, that happened yesterday in the evening. Uh, we also will kind of make a quick resume on tops and flops of the group stage um, and you know over the last few uh, days and also talk a teeny bit about the draw which will happen on Monday which is really really odd I gotta say. Um, but yeah despite I mean for me the most important is the Milan makes in the round of 16 they haven't done so since the 13-14 season when they were ousted by Atletico um, so it was high time i personally expect to not go much further unless the draw is kind but uh even if you would say that porto are the nominally easiest team or even if if you would say spurs uh they play i would see them as outsiders in any way so i honestly 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 i don't see milan progressing uh, yet beyond uh, to the quarterfinals or beyond. However, I would be very happy if, if they did. But just making this step into the round of 16 and doing it a year sooner than uh, Inter after their return to the uh, Champions League um, points to the right direction from here on. Yeah, now, now you got to confirm, 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 confirm. That's all that I am asking at this moment. But beside Milan, for me, the biggest thing is that uh, the fate of the French teams was hugely changed. I mean, in almost uh, in dramatic uh, session, uh, fashion, not session, <laughs> dramatic fashion, sorry. Uh, it's stoppage time. Both French teams uh, had their tw uh, fates changed in stoppage time. Marseille completely el eliminated because they were pushing on to move on in the Champions League and Spurs score and Marseille are out. And PSG lost their first spot in the group, which also will have some impact in the draw because you know now it's probably not so easy. Although I think uh, the difference between first and second sometimes is a little bit blurred, and you know what we say now it might change. Uh, that's the one thing with the draw come come coming up. Whatever we say now in come February, we may see a completely different picture anyway. But yeah, uh, that to me was kind of amazing. Uh, the finish, the finish, especially to Group D, was great. The other shootouts, uh, you know, Milan Salzburg. In the end, it was easy for Milan. A little bit of nerves uh, in the first half, but in the end, it it was easy. Leipzig, uh, very easy. Although also a second uh, goal in the in the or second half settled that one. Um, and then it was only. Um, as far as I, I, I remember, um, the you know first and second place in groups B and in groups H, where yeah, Atleti are out of Europe, totally, completely. Juventus almost was in, out, 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 out of there as well, but Atletico is probably the biggest casualty uh, of this entire in a group where you would actually expect them to push for first spot. They finish last. Big questions to be asked. I want to run through the key games. Um, while Leverkusen Club Bruges was not a, was a key key game, there wasn't much I can talk about because it was a really really bad game. But it meant that uh, Leverkusen were hoping that Porto are winning against Atleti because that's the point they need because they would own the head to head, and the head to head was very uh, uh, came very quickly into play because Porto was just overrunning Atleti in the first half. We, one must say only got two goals to Tarami and uh, Estacchio. Could have been more. Uh, Oblak was were, were, were the best man and Atletico were never really in, in the game. The only goal that they got was deep into stoppage time from. It looked like a direct corner, but then Marcano maybe got his head, head on. And at that moment you thought, yeah, maybe they get the one point that will see, see them through and eliminate Leverkusen. But uh, Atleti were not on the field for that, that, that one. That is, is uh, it's a confirmation of what, what we've seen of Atletico in past years. Although they have been in a quarterfinal, um, but over in the groups they had really, really poor performances. It's just you know, another thread in that line down. Um, 
Liverpool and Napoli had a head-to-head for first place, but not really because Liverpool needed to win by four goals or more. The game was rather even. Um, Napoli probably even the more complete side. In the end, Liverpool wins his late through goals for Asala and Darwin Nunez deep into stoppage time. But honestly, uh, I think when Ostigard's goal would have stood, uh, he was off, off, offside. I, I think uh, it would have been a more representative result of that that game or maybe or, or, or maybe it, or i really felt that the liverpool win was a little bit lucky ajax having no problem with rangers they had problems against the other two teams but no problem with range with range whatever they needed to tune it up they got it um uh, in apparently for inter was not given in munich that i think was a pretty clear one uh the way it was like a volleyball move from uh, sadio mane but then Bayern just two two good two 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 winners a really wild one in Pilsen, but it didn't account for anything. With Barca winning four two, it was all about the happenings in Group D. And especially if you're a Frankfurt fan, I mean, you were on every single position possible during that evening. You started the 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 evening in third, and the um, the game in uh, Lisbon. It was a rather even one with maybe slight advantage Frankfurt already, but uh, it was you could that 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 tell that those uh, teams are evenly matched uh, as opposed to when they met the first time around. Whereas in Marseille, the first half completely totally belonged to OM, who only scored a goal just before stoppage time, uh, 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 no, in stoppage time. But that was all about um, uh, OM. And even uh, Son had to come, come off, but I guess Bissouma coming on gave them uh, Spurs a little bit more of a stability. But that that was rather re- remarkable. Um, and then Sporting took, 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 took the lead as well. So uh, suddenly Frankfurt were in third. Then uh, they give uh, they give up the goal. They're still in third because it's still a draw in Marseille. Then Marseille go ahead and suddenly Frankfurt find themselves at halftime in last position. Work to do. And work they did. Uh, they actually played a really, really, really good second half um, and get a goal through um, Kamada, a penalty. Um, and a little bit uh, sooner, Langley had actually equalized in Marseille. And at that point, and suddenly Spurs were a much better team and put Marseille under pressure. Um, and then Colomuani turns it around to Frankfurt. At that moment, Frankfurt are back in third place. And with the goal by Kulko Kolomini, they're suddenly in first place. And they play home that uh, that uh, win, although it was really, really hard work. And uh, once the game ended, the moment the game ended in Lisbon, it was Frankfurt first, Spurs second, Marseille third, Sporting fourth. However, the game in Marseille had not ended. And Marseille were pushing forward because all they needed was a single goal. And they are through to the knockout stage for the first time since 2011. Uh, uh, yeah, I, something like that. However, they open themselves up so much that Kane plays a ball to Hoiberg, who is just free a goal. And with the last kick of the game, scores the winner for Spurs, sending Marseille out of Europe and Sporting are back. Maybe it's all right. I thought this group was so weird. And we'll talk about this when we look at it. This group was so weird because if it was only counted by head to heads, uh, Frankfurt would have uh, qualified probably as third or whatever. Uh, there was every team had a team in there where they just couldn't get it. This was a very, very evenly matched group. Maybe the overall re- results show that Marseille probably was not the uh, was not the best team in there. However, they were not the worst team, and they were a team that completely outplayed uh, Sporting. So, uh, it, uh, such a weird, weird group, such a dramatic ending. Um, again, weirdly enough, I actually was rooting for Frankfurt because of their coach Oliver Glasner, and it's really rare for me that I root for a German team. But it was a very interesting group, uh, and I don't know. Uh, while I'm not an OM fan, and I think uh, you know my fan heart says Sporting is in there, I could feel with Marseille because it seemed just so pointless uh, to lose that goal. At least you had a Europa League spot in there. Then going to yesterday evening, uh, Real easing over Celtic, and as I said, uh, Schachter against Leipzig. It was always Leipzig. I mean, Werner came off in the 20th minute when it was already 1-0 uh, through Nkunku. And then Leipzig had needed to find themselves a little bit. 
um, Schachter tried to, um, you know, score a goal and then at one of the oddest goals ever you thought it was all clear and Simakon ball comes back and Andre Silva is just standing there under the post and I, how to do it? he kind of he gets a touch on it and somehow it moves in it was really the weirdest goal one solo line seven six six second makes it three nil uh, it was only con confirmation what's going on, and then Bonda makes an own goal. So uh, that had to it was not much of a contest. Which, uh, to be honest, Milan Salzburg, um, I think for the first 20 minutes was squarely in Milan's hand. As Salzburg had, had had only one timid shot, a uh, uh, one shot where um, Kalulu blocked really nicely. Giroud scores a go ahead goal after uh at the end and already a third hit the outside of the post i mean he put it a little bit uh for for left and the, and, and the goal goes in he even had a second goal uh, rightfully unfortunately disallowed for offside um the wall stall uh, towards the end of the second first half i really felt that salzburg were uh pushing and with a little bit of luck they could have gotten a goal there were two shots where i was good positioning from tata Rujano, who again the problem with tata Rujano is he doesn't have control over the box. Whenever the ball flies high, you don't have the feeling, despite him being, him being such, such a lanky goalkeeper, you don't have the feeling that he dominates that box, as does uh, Mike Menyo. But, you know, uh, and then there was a penalty shout in there, which, you know, if the referee gives it, it probably stands. If he doesn't give, give, give it, there's no way that VAR turns around. I think Kalulu just gets the ball a touch on it, and in that sense... It is all right, although as far as I know now, that's not the rule anymore. Uh, so yeah, I think overall the 1-0 at half was all right, but Salzburg were in there. Milan were a little bit uh, going, going shaky and Pioli definitely was not happy, but they settled the score very quickly. Within a minute of the start of the uh, second half, Krunic heads in um, uh, to make it 2-0. Uh, then Giroud... Just use, I mean, it was so funny how Leao runs around the entire Salzburg defense. And, and, and that was anyway. I mean, Leao uh, just could escape the Salzburg defense over and over and over again. Uh, or in the first, first, I mean, some, sometimes his shot got, got blocked or he couldn't get the shot off. But here, he goes around, um, gives a cross. The Salzburg defense kind of clear falls to Giroud, makes it 3-0 at that moment. It was all done. Then uh, Leao even hits the, cro the crossbar and it, they were just driving it home. And late on, Messias, um, with another assist by Giroud, uh, scores the 4 nil. So uh, pretty cool stuff for Milan, as I said, back where, 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 where they belong. For Salzburg, it could have gotten even worse because at the moment they were 1-0 uh, down. Uh, Petkovic had... Um, Dinamo Zagreb up at Chelsea, however, for, uh, which would have meant that Salzburg are out of Europe and uh, Dinamo Zagreb would have uh, pulled in third place. However, Sterling and Zakaria uh, turned the game around for Chelsea, who then hang on rather easily for that one. Uh, there's not much I can tell today about the um, Group G, G games. Uh, City were 1-0 down at half, have turned around in a 3-1 win and Copenhagen... Uh, Scored the first goal of the group stage, 1-1 uh, at home to Dortmund, where they were 1-0 down, probably were even pushing. So if they had chances, they were also more on the Danish side. The last one we're going to talk a little bit more in detail is Group uh, um, H. Yes, my focus was fully on Milan Salzburg, but you know, Mbappe makes it very early on, 1-0 for PSG, and uh, well, assisted by Messi, and at that mo moment you really thought, okay, PSG is going to cruise home. However, Bonucci equalizes, and at that point, uh, two goals had already been, been scored in Haifa, uh, Ramos giving uh, Benfica the lead, and Sherry with a penalty, 1-1. Um, and as soon as the penalty went in, Juve were actually fourth in the table. However, Bonucci gets the equal, and, and then, uh, honest, honestly, you were in, in, uh, in that, at that point were not badly in the game. However, uh, PSG get them to go ahead, ahead, ahead go through Nuno Mensch. Uh, Musa had at that point already given uh, um, Benfica the lead again, Grimaldo makes it 3-1. But you thought, this is going to play out easily. PSG just sees this home, and goal difference will not play in any way a role. However, Rafa Silva makes it 4 4-1 in the 73rd, in the 88th, Enrique Araujo makes it 5-1, and at that point, it's one goal. 
that Benfica to use the seventh tiebreaker. And at that point, I don't understand. Maybe it was not in there anymore for, for PSG, but PSG just needed to get that one frigging goal. The one goal came though through João Mario in stoppage time for Benfica. And now Benfica sit first in the table on the seventh tiebreaker, uh, which means if teams are level on points, level in the head to head, which all, all were level on goal difference, level on scored goals, you have to take who scored more away goals. And that Benfica wins because of the big win in Haifa. Pretty amazing stuff. And underlining that this Benfica team is probably one that we have to definitely, definitely, definitely watch uh, go in forward. So let's look at the final group standings here. Um, just running through them in Group A, nothing really changed because uh, Liverpool could not get the win and it was never in there. Napoli, a very, very impressive, the best Champions League campaign. Maybe a little bit sour by the loss at Anfield, and, and, and was not much to play for Ajax moving the Europa League. Porto winning it late. I mean, uh, remember, they lost at home to Club Bruges 4 0, but uh, Club Bruges, after getting uh, into the North Norgren after match day four, they lose the next two games rather. The, uh, oh, oh no, get. Um, that they don't, don't lose, but uh, they don't win any, any anymore. And that ultimately undoes them, only conceding four goals at home to Porto. Otherwise, they are flawless, but you know, going second place, not the best by Liverpool can survive. Atleti, the big disappointment. Group C, um, it hinged on the Inter Barcelona head to head, which Inter, with a little bit of luck, won overall, but I think they also deserved to win that one. Bayern just romping through that group, and Victoria Pilsen was not up to snuff. And I say, Group D. Uh, the weirdest group of them all. Um, Spurs lost the head-to-head -to, -head to Sporting, won it against Frankfurt, won against Marseille. Frankfurt lost to both Spurs and Sporting, uh, but got a full six points against Marseille. Um, Sporting, the opposite around, uh, lost six points to Marseille. You really thought after two match matches that Sporting are going to cruise through this group and then they only make one more point at Spurs. Because they lose <laughs> twice too, too much. They, it was such an odd group. And as I said, I would actually like that the group standings are determined by head to head. Uh, meaning uh, you give three, 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 three points for, 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 for that uh, aggregate ties. Everywhere in that case, Frankfurt would not have made it, made it through. But overall, their performance was not too bad. Um, Chelsea, after all start, actually then with the two wins over Milan, uh, really had control of the attack room. Milan, 10 points usually gets you through. They get the 10, 10 points, and especially their last two matches, 8-0 eight, eight goals, uh, showed that they were clearly a step above Salzburg and Dinamo Zagreb. I, I was in Salzburg. Salzburg were the better team than Zagreb, uh, despite Zagreb getting that uh, little bit fluky win over Chelsea. Uh, Real Madrid, a little bit tighter than was needed, probably, but clearly the class of that, that, that group. Celtic were competitive, something that I didn't mention. Rangers were not. Ra Rangers actually uh, zero goals, and I think have the worst um, overall performance ever in a championship league, if, if, if you consider goals. Uh, Copenhagen score one goal and get three points, but and it's down to Sevilla being so bad. Um, City and Dortmund were evenly matched, but clear City better. And then uh, Group H, Juve, another huge, huge disappointment. I think only three points in this group is a pretty bad overall uh, achievement. Uh, for, for me, Atleti aside, you were the biggest disappointment of this group stage. It's not Bar Barcelona, because Barcelona got at least uh, here and there. It is, Juve is definitely worse than Barcelona. Because only three points in a group where you are expected to finish second is just very, very poor uh, of, of, overall. Um, given now the overall uh, change, change, I mean, uh, you see there are many things. The NAs, meaning the, the, those pro probably were already out of reach. But Frankfurt, Milan, Porto, Leipzig, of course, the big winners, also Spurs. Uh, did improve their chances in Benfica. And if we go on the negative side, uh, of course, it's Schachtel, uh, OM, Sporting, and Salzburg. Uh, Atletico, Concordia, surprisingly not, but this only counts for the Champions League. It doesn't take into account that they're completely out of Europe. Uh, who are now the favorites? I mean, what surprised me a little bit here, um, and probably should have checked, is 
that Liverpool move up now in third spot, but you know, their rating is so good still uh, that they are still in third spot. And I thought the PSG will uh, fall down a little bit more. So uh, some of those things don't really make sense. But um, it does make some, when, when, when we look at the ranking of, of the teams and knowing uh, the overall rating that they have, it makes sense. City, clear favorites ahead of Bayern, uh, Real Madrid, PSG, Liverpool. I don't think that anything Maybe Chelsea can spring an upset. I don't quite see it, uh, but I think everything outside of Chelsea, uh, if they make a semi-final, that would be a huge, huge, huge success. And then talking about the draw, uh, I managed a way to find the exact draw probabilities. I'm very proud of that. Uh, so you see here we have pot one, Napoli, Porto, Bayern, uh, Spurs, Chelsea, Real Madrid, City and Benfica. Pot two, uh, Liverpool, Bruges, uh, Inter, Eintracht, Milan, Leipzig. Dortmund and PSG you see how they can play each other and the one thing that sticks out is that yes uh, the pot one team with the least options are Bayern Munich because there are three German teams in there and the most restricted pot two team is Liverpool so uh, they are kind of a match made in heaven with almost a 40% chance of them meeting in the next round uh, and it is these rest restrictions uh, what also sticks out and we didn't talk uh, probably a lot about there's only one Spanish team, but we have three Italian teams, which hasn't happened in a long time, and even an Italian group winner. So this is something. This is a change. We have a team from Belgium in there, and we have only two Portuguese teams, although it could have been almost three. All English teams made it through. Um, but yeah, Bayern is, as I said, the most restricted pot one team because all other German teams are in pot two, and Liverpool is the most restricted pot two team. So they are, uh, yeah. Interesting draw is on Monday at 12. Yeah, I will probably do that evening a uh, quick draw recap or make a quick one minute video on that. I um, probably should do more because we want to talk about chances, who the draw was impacted and so on. In any case, please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Drop a line below of what you thought about the action in the Champions League this week. Um, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these and I will talk to you soon. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so to get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!